his horror show. Was there any, like, stops, like any breaks or anything? Or was it just full on four hours straight? Why is that your priority? Why is that what you think of? I'm thinking about the police. Did like... they get a snack break? <laughs> Did they get a loot break? Not included, um, strangely enough, in the description of the <laughs> trial. I wonder why they missed that bit out. <laughs> um, so yeah, it took an entire four hours, and the evidence presented in court included the cooking pot, uh, it included the uh, cutting board, and also a set of knives that actually belonged to Martin Duffy, the kid who I said the little mustache and stuff the, so the chef himself yeah so yeah i'm guessing that he definitely must have a hundred percent been into cooking yeah. definitely um yeah because why else would a kid have a set of knives on him then we wouldn't um uh, the trial was quite interesting uh, for this particular fact. Uh, there was a psychiatrist called Dr. Patrick Galway who was working uh, for Dennis's defence, and he tried to make up some sort of weird excuse for why he'd done it, and he diagnosed him with... I'm going to have to take a big breath for this. Borderline false self as if pseudo normal narcissistic personality disorder. What the fuck? Exactly. Uh, even the judge questioned the lengthy medical jargon that was used, and these testimony went over everybody's heads, including the juries. Um, so, can he ask, was that actually a clinical name of something, or was that just made up? I googled it and I could not find it. Okay. Uh, not to say it's not, but I guess if they put it into court and it was it was it his lawyer? Did you say it's his, it's his psychiatrist working on his side? Yeah. So a rebuttal psychiatrist uh, for the prosecution. So the other side of it, the people who were prosecuting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they got a psychiatrist called uh, Dr. Paul Bowden, who spent 14 hours with Dennis talking to him. Uh, he spent the longest time out of all the psychiatrists uh, who were brought to the trial, and he found no evidence for the testimony of the other guy. So he pretty much called bullshit on that diagnosis from earlier. Okay. Um, he just said that he thought Dennis was uh, extremely manipulative. As the trial came to a close, the judge actually instructed the jury to try to put aside all the psychiatric jargon, as he called it, uh, and reminded them, in his words, a mind can be evil without being abnormal, which is true. You don't it always need to have some sort of um, mental health issue for you to just be a bad person. Uh, but this guy definitely did have a mental disorder in <laughs> some way, shape, or form. There was something... Yeah, there, there was something there. Some synapses were not firing correctly with this guy, definitely. Um, finally, the trial came to a close, and he was convicted of six murders and two charges of attempted murder and was sentenced to life imprisonment with no possibility of parole for 25 years. Sorry to interrupt there. I thought... So that's eight. I thought you said he did 12. Yeah, well, no, he did more. He did uh, 15. Oh, 15. Total, but only six of which he could be convicted of. So you don't know, uh, you know what evidence they had. Because okay. to convict someone of murder, you need a pretty solid case yeah. to go with that. And the thing is, as well, you've got to know, if, if you put forward... Um, you know, a case, if you're trying to get this guy done and you've got hard evidence on six murders and you've got not such great evidence on maybe the other ones. Yeah. If you put them all forward and then your evidence is weak against those, that sort of, uh, it breaks away, it puts cracks in your case as a whole. Okay, yeah, so understandable. So you've really got to go with your strengths on these things, which is unfortunate because there's a good portion of victims out there who haven't had... There's no justification there. Yeah, they've yeah. not had their justice, really. I mean, they kind of through this, they have, in a way. Um, so yeah, he was told that he would have no possibility of parole for 25 years, but he has subsequently been told that he will die in prison, um, as it's not believed that he can ever 
be reformed. So he's not a very good guy. Um, there's also a picture here, which I love this picture. Da da! Seen that what big scar fuck? on his face? Yeah, someone slashed the twat. <laughs> Someone in prison. That is one deep twat. scar. That is a deep scar. It makes him more creepy looking, but I'm, you know, and I'm not one for violence in any way, shape, or form. But if someone was going to get cut, that guy deserved to get cut. Yeah, I'm going to say so. I would so. agree. I'm going to say so. So, what is his situation now? Well, thank you for asking, Al. <laughs> is this actually a thing? <laughs> thank you for that nice little lead in. <laughs> Uh, so this is the wrap-up, which I'm going to do right now. Uh, so Dennis Nielsen is currently 72 years old, spending the rest of his life in prison where he will die. Uh, he'll go down in history as one of the UK's most infamous serial killers, whose sad and disturbing acts of violence could have gone on to take the lives of many more innocent people if it hadn't been for the keen instincts of an everyday plumber, not Mario. Awesome. Um, We're talking about Mike Cotron. <laughs> Mike Cotron, for me, at this stage, is the hero of this story. If there was one, because a lot of people probably would have just ignored some yeah. of the things he would have done. Um, but yeah, thanks to him noticing the, the the specifics of the flesh down the drain, he was able to put a stop to it. Um, special mention, I guess, to all the survivors who obviously... They're living their lives now as best as they can be, but I'm sure that yeah. that lives on with them for a long time. Uh, and of course, you know, condol- I was going to have that. Yeah, you, you're, yeah. yeah. When you wake up in the middle of the night and you've been strangled and your head flushed in the bucket of water, you're probably going to have some, yeah. some a little PTSD from that, maybe. Yeah. Um, condolences as well to the family and friends of all of the victims. These people's lives were taken far too early, and also. Um, please, if you're going to reiterate this case back to friends or anything, please try your best not to lump them all in the same category. Be respectful. Yeah, because a lot of people and a lot of the things I was reading really do lump them all as homeless people who no one cares about. But these people had families and friends and people did care about these people. So just keep that in mind. Um, For Dennis Nielsen, we want to say a big... Fuck, Fuck you, you to Dennis Nielsen. Um, and that's it. That's the podcast. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and all of you in between, thank you so much for listening. I have been Mike James. And I've been Alan. And we'll see you next week for more adventures in Murderland. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>